All right, so the idea here is to start talking about specific loudspeaker topologies and sort of comparing them, how they relate to each other, while well, you might choose one over the other. So again, imagine a loudspeaker driver uh, suspended in, in what we call free air. It's not mounted on anything, it's just floating in the air. Um, these are the conditions that drivers, like commercially manufactured drivers, are generally tested under. Uh, and the, and it, it does give us a very clear picture of, of their mechanical and acoustic uh, performance. And those measurements are then used to sort of determine like how they might behave if we were to put them into a box. So it's important to understand what free air means, even though normally when we were designing a loudspeaker system, we would never just suspend a driver in free air, right? So probably the next simplest design after that, I think as I mentioned before, would be an open baffle speaker. Um, it's probably the simplest possible loudspeaker topology. Uh, and they have distinct limitations, and in some sense they can actually be more complex to design properly than like a sealed loudspeaker, which is probably more familiar to, to the majority of viewers. Um, but that said, I wanted to introduce them first because some of their characteristics can sort of like help to illustrate why we might prefer to use a sealed cabinet. And so when we talk about sealed cabinets, we'll be able to compare them to the limitations of open baffle speakers. Um, so in its simplest form, an open baffle speaker is just a driver mounted on a flat panel. Uh, and some designs might include like wings that extend backward to at least partially enclose the driver. Um, and this, you know, it remains an open design in the sense that sound is still able to escape from the rear uh, of the driver out into the listening space. But by including folded wings like that, we're able to sort of affect, or effectively increase the, um, the actual, like, effective dimensions of the, of the baffle. The baffle can be, like, effectively larger uh, without making the footprint, you know, unwieldy. Like, you don't want, like a plank of wood that's like four feet wide, you know, you're not going to be able to set that up in your living room in any uh, uh, com comfortable way. It just doesn't make sense, right? So the inclusion of wings, usually in like an H frame or maybe even a curved like U frame uh, configuration is one way to increase the base extension a little um, without making the system totally impractical. Impractical, I'm sorry, impractical. Okay, so that said, open baffle speakers are often referred to as dipole speakers because they radiate sound in two distinctive lobes from the front and the back, but very little to none perpendicularly to the axis uh, of, of, the, of the speaker's motion. So if an enclosure were used, um, that backward radiation would be trapped inside of the enclosure so we would only have the radiation from the front, and in that case, we would describe the system uh, as, as a monopole instead of as a dipole, because the sound is only radiating in one direction from the front. So in a sealed speaker, the volume of air inside the enclosure places a sort of load, like it acts like a sort of, um, like a spring almost, uh, like a restoring force on the driver. When the driver moves backward, the volume of air in the cabinet kind of pushes back on it. Um, and that helps to like control and to an extent limit the motion of the driver as it moves back and forth. And this is important to understand when we're talking about open baffle speakers that lack this behavior because most modern drivers are designed with the expectation that they'll be used in an enclosure, generally a sealed or vented one. So when you're designing an open baffle system, you need to understand that a lot of commercially manufactured drivers are really not well suited to that kind of application and you have to pay extra attention to the sort of like characteristics of, of the driver that, that you're selecting uh, to accomplish this. Um, so open baffle speakers necessarily exhibit like a, like a natural bass roll off um, and that's determined by the dimensions of the baffle. You know, there's a relationship between the width of the baffle, the average width of the baffle, uh, you know, in, in, in both axes, and the wavelengths of the sound that's, that's being produced by it, 
and below a certain frequency, the wavelengths will be long enough that the rear and front emissions are able to sort of wrap around the baffle because uh, they're bigger than it, and they'll be able to like destructively interfere, um, and we end up with with a sort of loss of bass below that frequency. The bass starts to roll off uh, at like a six, I think a six dB per octave uh, slope that's relatively predictable below that sort of like corner frequency. Um, so that natural bass roll off though isn't always a huge problem and it makes open baffle speakers more than acceptable for applications where deep bass isn't necessary. One really good example is guitar cabinets. A lot of guitar cabinets are open back and so you can think of those as open baffle speakers that have wings, right? You know, like they, they have wings that extend backwards, but they're not sealed. You know, the sound from, from the rear of the drivers is still able to escape into the listening environment. And, um, you know, that's, that's a really good example of, of an open baffle speaker uh, in, in practice. There are also hi-fi examples, but I think an open back guitar cabinet is probably the example that people will be the most familiar with. Um, so open baffle speakers are certainly less efficient than sealed or ported enclosures. Um, you know, they are going to require more power uh, to produce the same like output level. Um, for them to compete with sealed or ported enclosures, really when you're choosing drivers, the important things to think about are that you're going to want drivers that displace a lot of air. And you're also going to want drivers that have relatively rigid suspensions so that they can maintain control over themselves even when operated at relatively high levels because they're not going to have the benefit of any sort of restoring force or acoustic load from the air trapped inside like an enclosure behind them. There is no enclosure. So they have to control themselves basically. So um, more, more rigid suspensions, higher, higher QTS values are, are generally seen, uh, you know, in, in driver selection for open baffle speakers. Um, and yeah, for them to compete, you want high displacement. So, you know, you're going to need either a high maximum excursion or a really big cone or ideally both because both of those things combine to create, uh, you know, a high amount of, of displacement. And that's going to be necessary to create appreciable low end response uh, in combination with, with a relatively large baffle if you really do want low end out of a uh, open baffle system. So, one big advantage of open baffle speakers is that they don't suffer from problems with resonance, like the resonance of like the cabinet of the box that, that many, many drivers are mounted in. There's no box, there's no resonance. So, you know, in a standard uh, sealed enclosure, various resonances are introduced when the wavelengths that the driver is reproducing are mathematically related to the dimensions of the cabinet. You know, the, the, Ed, the panels and, and, you know, the walls of the cabinet will resonate sympathetically in response to that energy. And um, this creates appreciable coloration in the low end and in the mid range. And um, it's probably one of the biggest issues with speaker cabinets and one of the, f not few, but one of the most distinctive places where an open baffle design can like really shine, you know, um, so that's important. That's one like major reason why you might consider designing an open baffle system. Um, and the other big thing that people talk about is that they can have a sort of like diffuse quality to the way that they reproduce sound. Like they impart a sense of like ambiance sort of to the sound that's reproduced. Um, the sound radiated from the rear of the driver is able to move freely through the room. And so it'll, you know, if, if you have these speakers like these open baffle speakers set up, um, you know, like in your, in your listening room, not too far away from a wall, that rearward energy is going to be reflected off the wall and it's going to bounce back towards you into the room. And it's going to be like out of phase with the, uh, you know, the sound from the front, but that sort of delay from the bounce in some people's opinion can create sort of like a, a liveliness and sort of like a, a simulation of like a reverberant acoustic space that can impart some quality, I guess, to a recording. Um, 
you know, whether that's actually desirable is up to the listener and up to the intended application because it really technically is a sense of color. It's a form of coloration. It's a form of distortion. It's not natural or accurate reproduction of the signal being fed into the speaker. But at the same time, some people appreciate that sense of almost being there that it can impart to like especially classical recordings, it seems, you know, people, people seem to see, I hear that a lot. Um, and, you know, again, to return to the example of a, of a, of a guitar cabinet, open baffle speakers can be great options for instrument, uh, instrument loudspeakers, which are not necessarily trying to, uh, reproduce sound in the most accurate possible way. They're designed more to actually impart color intentionally and to sort of like be used to create a sound and like, like the coloration of the loudspeaker is, is almost part of the instrument, you know, it becomes part of how the instrument sounds. So, um, you know, especially again, guitar does not require a lot of bass extension. So, uh, you know, open baffle speakers can be a great option for that. And uh, I think in the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about that specific case of like an open back guitar cab. We'll use a guitar cabinet as like a, a first example of like, we'll walk through like how we would design a guitar cabinet and why we would make the decisions that we would make to make sure that it'll perform well for its intended purpose, which is reproducing guitar. And that's it. So see you next time. That's open baffle speakers. Thanks again.